Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Lisa Jarrett. I'm one of the co-founders and co-directors of KS MOCA, or the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School Museum of Contemporary Art, which is located inside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School here in Northeast Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by my co-founder and co-director, Harold Fletcher, a professor at Portland State University School of Art and Design, and the director of the MFA Art and Social Practice Program, and also Amanda Lee Evans, who is one of our primary collaborators on the KS MOCA project. Um, this morning, we are going to hear the third talk from the artist Spencer Garland, and I'll turn it over to Mo in just a second to introduce Spencer to you all again. Um, but I want to make sure to welcome all of our Dr. MLK Junior School students who are watching this presentation via our YouTube live channel. And students, if there's anything that you want to know or anything you'd like us to ask Spencer on your behalf, please feel free to put your questions in the chat and we will make sure to get those questions to Spencer at the end of this talk today. Um, I also wanna make sure to thank everybody at Dr. MLK Junior School that helps us make this project possible, um, specifically Principal Jill Sage, Paige Thomas, Nancy Rios, Michelle Peake, and of course, Mr. Monty, who wants to make sure everybody remembers to exercise every day because it makes you feel better. Mo made sure that I, I would know to say that. So, hey, Mr. Monty, we'll all get a little bit of exercise in, uh, hopefully this afternoon as well. So um, we will uh, talk to all about what else is happening in the program after Spencer's talk this morning. But for now, I'm gonna turn it over to Mo and see if we can learn a little bit about Spencer before we hear his presentation. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, something that I just wanna say is that shout out to all the people in KS Mocha, including the people that I've introduced. They're all really fun to introduce. That's why I like this job. Uh, hi, I'm Mo. I go to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School. I'm the head photographer for KS Mocha. You already know that. Today I'm introducing the artist Spencer Garland for his third talk! Congratulations! Even though I've, this is my first time introducing him. Okay. His art project is called Brenda Arts. Never heard of it. Spencer talks about... It talk today is called Ghoul School. Ghoul School is a collection of children, monsters, and stories that he made into 3D. All those students who created them are very cool. We are going to meet some of the characters and learn more about the wizards who designed them so they use magic wands. Okay, Spencer is a visual artist. He is interested in creating new black stories and showcase black experiences. It's cool. Gar Garland runs Brenda Arts School, an after school film production, film program, film program geared towards POC youth and in and and involves film production theory and exploration cool welcome Spencer thank you for being here today I'm going to now turn it over to Spencer goodbye Mo, Mo came in hot man shout out thank you for the amazing introduction Hello, everybody who's watching. Um, I'm Spencer. Uh, if you've seen any of my other speeches, uh, you know that I'm a wizard. I make uh, magic happen with my mind and the ability to uh, sit indoors for multiple hours and play with Blender. Um, but now, you know, I have probably my best work that I've ever done in any facet, um, besides like uh, long lasting uh, relationships and friendships. Uh, this is probably my greatest artistic achievement. It's called Ghoul School. Uh, as I was saying before, it was it's a collection of children's monster designs and stories. And I worked really hard on this one. I'm really I'm really stoked with how it came out. And I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna get into it, man. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, new buds to meet and explore. And uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna start. So hopefully. Everything is working out. Okay, perfect. Uh, oh yeah, we're doing it now. 
So ghoul school. This is a uh, picture of about half of the monsters that I create recreated in 3D. Uh, and we'll introduce, you know, all of them over the course of this talk. So yeah, let's just get into it, man. Let's go, let's go have some fun. Let's explore these uh, very imaginative creatures that were designed by children in about 15 minutes and still some of the craziest backstories and craziest designs I've ever seen. And I, I just love the, the Black Child imagination, man. It's so untamed and free. And that's what I'm trying to get to every day in my life. So basically what I just... Uh, hey. Sorry to interrupt. I just am seeing on YouTube for some reason your um, your talk's getting a little cut off. I'm wondering if you could try just really quickly resharing your screen. Okay, let me try. Uh, let me try this again. Stop share. You know, tech technical difficulties. I'm not a, a pro Twitch streamer. Uh, does this uh, is this working? I is it watch better? Twitch. I mean, it looks great on Zoom. It just, for some reason, is getting a little cut off on YouTube. I, oh, okay, yeah, looks better. Thanks. Okay, okay, cool. So we're back in it. So yeah, Ghoul School is a catalog of the Black Child's imagination. The project is ongoing collaboration with uh, Kairos PDX. Shout out to Kids of Kairos if you're watching. Um, shout out to the original Wizards. Um, a lot of them have included some pieces in this. And KS Mocha, shout out, and MOK, shout out to all of the wonderful people there that have uh, welcomed me into this community. Really appreciate it. I just wanted to seek a you know, new form of Black expression with this project. So just something about me. This, this, uh, I, uh, you know, fun fact, I've never been able to take a good school picture my whole life. They've all been really weird, uh, this being one of them. My mom thought uh, that looks like an affliction put button down was, was cool. It was not. Uh, I looked bad and I continued to look bad until college. So just, you know, fun fact. But essentially what I'm trying to get at is my whole life, I've been trying to build worlds and tell stories. Um, everything that I grew up on, Goosebumps, the aforementioned Jurassic Park, E.T., Zathora, Indiana Jones. They were all worlds that I wanted to be a part of. But for reasons either explicitly or, you know, that were covert, I wasn't allowed to be in them. There weren't any Black people in there at all. Um, really, you know, Indiana Jones is a whole series about the difference between non-white people and white people. So that's it, it made it my it made it abundantly clear that I wasn't supposed to engage with that content, even though I still didn't. I still love it to this day. Um, my uh, my whole thing now is as I matured as a artist and as a storyteller, my effectiveness um, is you know making worlds that I had in my head come to life. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner. You know, that was a, a drawing that I made when I was like 13. And about 10 years later, I made it into a 3D model. Then I put myself, then I put that model in the world with me, which is what I always saw in my head, but I didn't have the technical ability to do it until recently. So I uh, got good, as the gamers say. I, I got good at 3D and my ability to tell the stories I always wanted to tell has been able to come to fruition, which is super sick. And I wanted to do that for other people because I'm sure that there's other kids who look like me who don't, um, who have these, you know, bold visions, these bold dreams, but they can't, um, they don't know how the know-how of making their dreams into a reality in this way. So hopefully I can help them with that. Hopefully I can inspire some kids to pick up Blender after the, after this, uh, after this talk, I'll show you how to use it. Um, at the end, we're going to model something live. So hopefully my computer doesn't explode for that. But, you know, more going more so into, you know, media or whatever, um, genres like horror and science fiction are meant to be reactionary to things that are happening in the world that we live in. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is coming down to the um, exploitation of, of black people and uh, people of color largely. 
Um, I didn't really know that. I always kind of assumed, but I didn't have the words to put into it uh, or put it towards until recently. You know, why is a zombie scary? Zombies come from voodoo culture, the voodoo religion. You know, it's different than what we've been indoctrinated to believe, right? It's just a, a different way of being that deems it scary. The same thing with mummy. I, with mummies, I always thought, you know, people dressing up as a dead Egyptian person, dead Egyptian royalty was kind of weird. And that even in the like in the, the Boris Korolov mummy movie, which the posters on screen, it was a, a non-white as non-black person playing that character. So it's a lot of mockery in it. Um, I don't mummies, you know, death is scary. Yeah. Mummies is just a, it's just a person, somebody that. I could have been related to, but I can never know due to the erasure of a lot of culture. So I always think about that, you know, anything with like King Kong, you know, it's the fear of uh, fear of the black man, you know, Planet of the Apes is fear of black people unionizing and up uh, and having uprisings. It's never just like these monsters are never just about what you know, giant apes or whatever. There's always some kind of coded language within it. And as a consumer, of, I watch way too much TV. It really, I internalize a lot of that imagery and I had to learn to work my way through it and break it down. So making art for me is crucial in order to, you know, unpack what I've been indoctrinated to believe about myself and my, my community. And what I do at Brenda Arts is I give kids an opportunity to make things that reflect them as people or as thinkers or as scholars, leaders, wizards, whatever. I just want them to be able to express themselves fully in a way that Black people usually don't have the luxury to do. There still hasn't been a best Black director at the Oscars in 100 years, almost. So I just want people to be free. I'm trying to work on that. I really felt free when I was doing these mon doing these monster designs, collecting these stories, um, and putting this whole project together. So hopefully this inspires you to go out and create some stuff. And you know, no matter what people uh, think of what your monsters are, as long as you're having fun doing it, that's what I want people to do. So like I said, task kids to make their own creatures and their own backstories. I wanted the monsters to represent them. So we're going to start off hot. I'm going to start off with probably one of my favorite ones that I designed. Uh, his name is Greenman, uh, even though he's blue. This is Greenman. Um, as you can see, uh, and every, on the, qu the quotes on screen are what the, the wizards, the, the children wrote of their monster. So I should probably specify that beforehand. If these aren't my words, these are words of others. So as you can see, he is green. It's a monster that eats people, pukes them up, and he lives in outer space. I love him a lot. Um, took a long time to finish this one. A lot of different iterations. Um, the head didn't come out right. So I had to remodel the head. The body wasn't working right. Then I was like, okay, so I had to go remodel that a couple of times. Um, then it's like, once I got the, the head and body, right, you know, it's like, okay, how do I go in and texture it? How can I give them the scales? So I figured out how to do the scales. How, how can I make the, um, the eyes more realistic? The, the eyes were just kind of eyeballs that were floating on top of the head. So I had to figure out how to put eyelids on them, which I never had to do before, excuse me, which I never had to do before. Um, because my art wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But this project really pushed me to be the best I could be. Um, and hopefully that resonates with the person who made it. So shout out to you. Um, uh, and I'll send all of these monster designs back to the students who made them so they can uh, have fun with it. But yeah, the, uh, there's a lot of processes. This was like seven iterations in. And I think this one came out great all things considered. So yeah, we're going to keep moving on. This is Star. This is the original child art. And this is the render. Uh, she is black and white. She is very kind, but she can mean if she has to be. She is an only child. I can relate to that. Uh, but her parents died when she was two. 
So she lives with her mom, with her mom's sister. Her mom and dad's favorite colors were black and white. That's why she is black and white. She is 12 years old. Very cool. I don't know how you would come up with a backstory that quickly for uh, for a character that you just drew, but I'm always I'm always always impressed by the minds of children, man. It's such a beautiful thing. I love this one. I like the shades. That one, they came out pretty cool. And I like the horns too. This is the first one that I did. Uh, my girlfriend designed it, and it. I wanted to uh, do something special and make it into a shirt for her, so I. Uh, made the little doodle and then I had a lot of fun doing it. So I offered um, kids at Kairos the opportunity to make their own monsters in 3D. And uh, now we're here. So this is the first one that I did and I think it came out good. Um, there's a little fish in the bag that the lamb is holding. Uh, I didn't zoom in on it, but it's there. Just trust me on that. Very cute, very soft. This is one from a friend of mine. Um, the backstory is, this is called Monday. The backstory is that I made this character during the time when I had a lot of space to reflect. The idea was I'd make a character for each day of the week. I only got to Tuesday, though. I tried to encapsulate how Mondays made me feel. Not quite awake, a little bit, a little exposed, maybe grumpy. This one is cool. I use a lot of different textures on it. Um, all, all the textures I knew how to do fur, um, skin like metal. I, I guess it looks like tortilla chips for the teeth. Had a little bit of fun with that. But yeah, this one's pretty cool. It's a very good amalgamation of uh, everything that I've been able to, to do with this project and learn how to do. Because I didn't know how to do fur before. I didn't really know how to do particle effects. But now I do. And now I can uh, teach other people how to use them. This is Mr. Panda. This is one, the first one I did from Kairos. It came out really cute. Um, I had to learn how to texture things and um, use fur effects. So I never had to do that before. So this is a very good uh, introduction to this project where uh, I got to the, you know, the end when I got really crazy with it. This is from a child of a fellow teacher at Kairos. Um, her son gave me this um, reinterpretation of Elmo or maybe like Dark Elmo or Omle or email Elmo, whatever, kind of scary, but I liked, uh, I liked the vibe that I was putting off. So I did my best to reimagine it in 3D. I showed it to him a couple months ago and he was really stoked on it. And that made, uh, that meant a lot to me uh, that I, I could pick up what he was putting down in his drawing and I could re uh, reintroduce it in my style and give it back to him. And he said, oh, that's really cool. And now he has it as his wallpaper. So it's pretty cool. This is Gerald. Uh, this is one from another Kairos kid that I've worked with for, I guess, two years now. Um, this one's came out really good. There is a belly button on it, but his hands are covering it. He looks very shy, but I'd be his friend for sure. This is Devil Duck. This one made me hungry making, uh, but I'll, and I'll tell you why in a second. He is part devil and part duck. He lives in the middle of the earth and eats human joy. Uh, he can breathe fire and suck blood. He smells like ashes and is hot as lava. Uh, he feels like coal. He seems really mean, but he is nice to me. This one's probably my favorite that I did, one of them. Um, I didn't realize why I got hungry making this until I had a chance to reflect. It's the colors of red velvet cake. And you know I love red velvet cake. So um, looking, at, looking at him made me hungry. He's very upset. Uh, he seems very angry, but I would be his friend. Uh, I'm, that's why he made the poster. He's close to me, but, you know, a little bit far away because I don't know. He seems like a wild card. I don't know what he's going to do. Mr. Lion. Oops. Oopsie. There we go. Uh, Mr. Lion. Um, this animal likes to hunt wild animals. The lion is very, uh, a lion is a wild animal that can be friendly or it can mean and hurt you. Be mean and hurt you. Uh, very cute. I like the little, uh, the little smile. Very coy, uh, looks like a Cheeto. Uh, I would befriend him, but also from a distance. Like I, you know, like the description said, lions are wild cards, so I don't know what it's gonna do. But it seems pretty soft, so I'd pet it. Mister Sher, uh, uh, Rainbow Sherbert. My bad. This one is. Uh, this one was strange to make. I'll read the description first before I talk about why it was. Um, her name wasn't always Rainbow Sherbert. It was rain and she had no horn and she was gray. One, 
One day, she wished that she was more of a fantasy creature. And to her, her luck, a shooting star passed right when she wished that. As always, her wish came true. So she became a jack corn I guess. Um, I modeled this after a real rabbit. That's why the fur looks like real rabbit fur. Um, the, uh, it's a weird um, hybrid between realistic and cartoon. So I like it. It looks very soft. And again, I would be friends. Uh, doesn't seem like a raw card. And yeah, I hope uh, the student who made it uh, enjoys it. Also, shout, I really like the backstory. Um, we, I think I all, we all want to be fantasy creatures. I'd be invisible. I, I think that would be my fantasy power. Or maybe the ability to fly. I'm not really sure. Clowns. I saw this to a kid yesterday. Um, and he said it was like Ronald McDonald. But for, I guess, copyright purposes, it'd be like Randall McDonald. Uh, this is the first time I had to put clothes on a character. I didn't really know how to do it. So I figured out how to make a box, essentially, and put it around the lumpy body mesh, which is what the, the body looks like. And you can stimulate like fabric, like clothes and uh, like clothes fabric in Blender. And... I uh, did that and it came out pretty cool. I used the texture of the actual picture, um, the colors that were used to make the shirt. So, you know, the art, the student's work is in this work. It's pretty cool. Shadebot 11. This is one of the, one, the, the later ones I finished. I finished this a couple of days ago. This is Shadebot 11. He is a spy from the Mellow Empire before it crumbled. Now he is a bounty hunter that is always looking for a job. Smells slightly of trash. Sounds like cr uh, cranking and grinding. You see, he sounds like he has arthritis, unfortunately. I, I feel you. Being, uh, being 25 in the middle of the pandemic it ages you a little bit. So, um, yeah, I, I can relate to that. I used a fancy big word, big brain boy over here, a procedural, uh, a procedural rust texture to make the body look like it was rusting. Basically, that means if you apply this coat of paint to this object, um, every time you apply it, it will look different. Um, and the, the where the rust is will look different each time you apply it. Kind of hard to explain, but basically, it's just like where the, ran uh, the rust goes each time is random. And I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, like, an, like a World War robot type beat for sure. Fluffer Puffer, very cute, a little seal. Half seal, half fluff balls, half fluff ball. I love seals and I love fluff balls, so bam. Auras change color when it feels different emotions. He smells of vanilla. I'd be his friend for sure. Um, yeah, I like I, this one was fun to do. I had to learn how to, uh, again, I had to reintroduce the ability of texturing into my repertoire for making this one. So I get, gave it a little, you know, a little blush where the blush on the picture was, um, made sure that the eyes were very blue and they look soft. So yeah, made the, made the fur kind of clump in different spaces because if it's a seal, it probably gets wet and the fur clumps together in different places each time it goes in the water. So yeah, I just wanted to add a little, you know, small details. The devil's in the details, as the people say. So, Eye of the Beholder. This one didn't have a backstory. But I like it. It reminds me of a, a character from Doom. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see the reflection of the world in his eyeball. Pretty neat. And, and it can fly in, in my interpretation. So, that's pretty neat. Mr. Tripodoo. Now, this one, this one is, a, this is an, an epic an epic story. So let me see if I can read all of it. So this little guy re is really shy towards humans and he only comes out at night to get his favorite food, pine cones. He loves pine cones. He loves them, loves them, can't get enough of them. But there is one problem. The park where there are tons of them is across two sidewalks, not just one, two. And for, uh, and for some reason, uh, at some weird, uh, that's at, for some reason, uh, weird humans are still out on the sidewalks late at night, I guess. I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know what people do on the sidewalks at night. Uh, so that so this is where his name comes from. When he crosses the uh, when he crosses the sidewalks, he trips humans and quickly turns into a stick or a crack in the sidewalk, etc. The point of this, not me, the author of this piece. The point of this is I always seem to trip on things when I uh, uh, things when, for example, I have to go to the bathroom at night. Um, there is always a dog toy or Hot Wheels car, etc. That's always the worst. I have um, definitely taken a couple of tumbles late at night, not knowing where I was going in the dark recesses of my house. I'm also afraid of the dark. So maybe Mr. Chippadu did, you know, uh, try to get my pine cones, I guess. There's a lot of them in my home. So I don't know. Mr. Chippadu is all around us. Be, be vigilant. He's out there. This is uh, one that I did last night. This is the last one I needed to finish. Uh, this one was for the, the prompt mannequins. And I was like, okay. There wasn't a lot of detail, so I had to freestyle it. And, uh, you know, mannequin, I was watching ASAP Rocky videos, and I was thinking about Mythbusters, as I do, you know, on a Tuesday or whatever, Wednesday. And I was like, okay, let's make Buster. He's a mannequin, kind of. So I modeled the, uh, the mannequin, the orange part. And I was just like, well... This isn't scary. So how can I make it, you know, a little bit ghouly, you know, for the ghoulies and buoyos out there? So I decided to make it like a plastic shell, but the inside is some kind of flesh monster and there's alien controlling it. So you can see that the chest, there's a hand sticking through it. There's flesh on the inside and um, in the, in the head. There's like some kind of weird alien creature controlling it. Uh, but yeah, I think this one's this one turned out pretty cool. I might have to do something with this later, but this one's one of my favorites uh, of the ones I just had to start from start to finish. Um, U times two can't get sued by Nintendo, so I had to make a, a, a my version of Mew two, so they can't sue me. Uh, I don't have money to combat a case from them, so I did a uh, you know amalgamation. Got the got the vibe right. Changed the colors. Added some new eyes. Think it's fun. He's cute. Sunderman. This is the um, the brother of the person who made Gerald design this one, and uh, I was pretty stoked on how it came out. I gave him a little money clip because he's business. He's business oriented. He 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 scares people at night, but during the day he's like a CPA. So pretty cool. The ticking monster. Now this one is um, this one freaked me out. I didn't know I could do this. I, I, I shouldn't have been allowed to do this, uh, but the um, there wasn't a lot of detail on the body. So I was just like, let's just freestyle it. You know, let's make a tubby, tubby boy. And I did that. And when I looked at it, I was just like, what have I, what have I created? I felt like Steve Buscemi and Spy Kids 2. Uh, I was afraid of my own creation, uh, but he made the poster. Uh, he's behind me. I don't know what he's doing. But every time I take when I when that picture is being taken, I turn around just to make sure he was he's being nice to the other monsters, you know. I you gotta, you know, he you never you never know. You never know. He could be he could be a bully, but he could also be very soft and introspective. And I like to think of him in his burgundy shirt. He's very soft and introspective. So pretty cool. This one is another Kairos kid who I've worked with for a long time. Um, he made me remember it was purple. And I wanted to make a, uh, I, I nicknamed him Grammis, kind of like Grimace from McDonald's. I don't think people below 25 know who that is. And that's fine. You shouldn't know who Grimace is. But yeah, he has kind of tongue arms. Weird. Something. Something was born on Mars. They kicked her out when she was 18. That's eight in human years. Uh, to live on Earth because she looked different than the other aliens on Mars. She is scared of humans and little teeny kids. Me too, a little bit. I like, they've grown on me. But yeah, I like this one too. Um, kind of uh, reminds me of my uh, life as a teenage robot a little bit. I, uh, this one almost broke my computer actually. Uh, having the eye holes uh, did not fare well for my CPU. So it started to freak out, but I got it done and it turned out pretty cool. Uh, looks kind of like the, the head kind of reminds me of an AirPod container. 
this one also broke my computer. When you try to cut images out, um, try to cut pieces out of um, high quality meshes or high polygon meshes, your computer is like, uh uh, we're not going to do it. We're going to shut down on you. Uh, but I had to really wrangle it. I had to rustle with my PC and we got this one done and it turned out pretty cool. This is a one from another Kairos kid. Uh, I like this dragon. This is one that I did later, like a couple days ago. And I'm pretty uh, stoked on how it came out. I like the cloud. And um, yeah, the, the head is a little bit of a horse's head. So I think that's pretty neat. It kind of reminds me of a seahorse. Seahorse dragon. Hmm, pretty cool. And it has a crown. So it's royalty. We love to see that. This is Ron. Uh, this ghost, his name is Ron. He's, he came from the underworld. Uh, he only comes out the night of Halloween to frighten people who are not scared. That's Ron's story. Simple, cut straight to the point, almost like a haiku. Uh, you can see his little, I guess, um, blush in his head. Uh, he's transparent. And I think that that was pretty cool. Putting him together uh, fared more challenging than I anticipated, trying to get you know all the little curves of his body. But I think he turned out really, really well and is ac uh, accurate to the picture. Little guy. He's just a little guy. Like me. I'm 5'5". Five five. Uh, he is a voodoo doll. His name is Little Guy. Simple, straight to the point. This is from one of the original wizards that um, was in my class in the before times uh, when we did movies. And uh, one of a student that was really... Um, Really, uh, really, really uh, curious and likes to, to learn a lot and um, is in my class now at Kairos. And, you know, it's cool that they've returned to uh, learn more and work with me some more. That means a lot to me um, that the kids uh, return and they want to keep doing working with me. That that means that means a lot. So I did I did my best to reinterpret what they made. And uh, since it's a voodoo doll, I got to put pins in it. So I added some pins. They look pretty cool. This is the last one that I made. This is also from a Kairos student who I've worked with for a long time. Um, a mad scientist found an, an ancient necklace with an eye amulet on it. It transformed the scientist into an eyeball, man. Uh, this, this student's, this wizard's aesthetic is largely eye-based. Uh, a lot of the things that he makes has a lot of eyes in it. And this is no exception. Since I've worked with him before over the last couple of years, I had art from him from back in the day. And he designed a shirt for the school and I had it still. So I put the, um, the design that he made from like a year ago on this character. And he, when I showed it to him yesterday, he was like, oh yeah, you still have that. It's like, yeah, dude, great art is great art. So I'm glad that I could re, uh, incorporate things that he's already made into this. And he was stoked on it. So that's all the monsters. We made it through. And, uh, you know, now, you know what? So what? Right. What's the what's the point of all of this? What's why did I why did I make it? Well, for me personally, it was a great way to increase my skill in modeling. And it got my confidence up a lot. Uh, on the left is references that I would look at to make these. Um, they're from Rareware. They made Donkey Kong Country and some of the Star Fox games in the or in the mid '90s. And these were games that I grew up on, and I always loved the graphics. And I never thought I could make something that emulated that style. And then over the course of this project it really, you know, hit me and was like, wow, I'm really doing what I'm inspired by. So I thought that was really cool. Um, you can see the correlations, or maybe you can't, I can, but maybe you can't between the left and right. I had a lot of fun doing that. I got to it put myself in a narrative like these. Shin Megami Tensei on the left, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends on the right. Um, these are also things I grew up on or just saw around. And I always wanted to be able to put myself in the world where there's a lot of creatures and stuff, because that's always what I see when I'm walking around. I'm always like daydreaming and stuff. So when I, when I have the ability, I got the ability to have 
these ideas in my head and then execute them. The monsters are no longer just in my head or like on a piece of paper. They're in the world and I can interact with them potentially going towards like making movies and stuff. But it was a very um, powerful moment for me when I finished the post. I was like, wow, I'm really doing it. And if I'm doing it, other kids can do it. You know, I'm just a kid really just trying to make art and have fun doing it with my friends. So that's, that's where I want to, what I, my whole, my whole schema is or pedagogy, whatever, big adult words. So, you know, ghoul school satisfies, you know, the need for fullness of black imagination that is only, you know, reserved for, for white people, unfortunately, but, you know, imagination is free and it's for everybody. Uh, by allowing POC youth to develop their own characters and worlds, audiences will be able to examine not only their fears, but their interests. Uh, like I said before, working with these kids means everything to me. And yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful thing, man. So at the end of all of this and all of my, you know, this is the end of my tenure here. So, you know, what's the point of all of this? Like, why should you care? What are the takeaways? Here, the takeaways are pretty simple. It's like four sentences. Uh, never stop creating. Always make things that make you happy. Don't let any t anybody tell you how to, don't let anyone tell you how to do your art or put you in a box artistically. Your stories matter. Always remember that. From one wizard to another, always remember that your stories matter. Do all the things that I put on this slide and you'll be all right. So yeah, thanks. So I have a little bit more time. So we're going to, instead of like explaining how I make the models and all that, you know, I'm just going to show you uh, because I have the ability to do that. So I'm going to stop share. I hope you enjoyed uh, meeting all these monsters. And now I'm going to have my little Twitch moment. Um, catch me on stream. So here we go. Here we go. This is, uh, this is Blender. I have a uh, little, as you can see, these are all the buttons I'm gonna be using. Uh, it shows what I'm doing. Basically, this is what Blender looks like when you start it up. I added pictures so I can use the references um, already. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna left click on this box here. As you can see, it's solid, but I'm gonna use some magic. Don't ask me how this works. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a mathematician. But if you put on, oh no, it's kind of trying to, okay, let's see if I can do this real quick. I'm gonna try to, nope. I'm gonna try to figure out how to put subsurface, uh, subsurface, subdivision surface on, and that's gonna turn it into a ball. And I can, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. So it's gonna turn this into a ball. The more subdivisions you add, the more spherical uh, the ball becomes, more smooth and whatnot. I guess shade it smooth, so it's like nice and smooth, cool. Uh, I'm gonna shrink it down. I'm gonna put it over the, the head of this spider that this wizard drew. So now I have that, pretty cool, right? I'm going to, Shift D and duplicate the sphere. So now I have two of them. It looks vaguely of you know what the picture looks like. And I'm gonna do that again one more time, and I can move it down. So basically, we have the body of our little spider. Pretty cool. Um, so you can see here, it's not rendered, there's nothing on it, but we can get to that point over time. So I'm going to shift A and add some more spheres for the eyes. Since, I don't know why it's all the way down there, I'm going to have to eyeball where the, oh, perfect. I can put that over here. Awesome. I can make the eyeballs red because I want them to be. I'm going to change the material to glossy, kind of like glass. I'm going to change the color to red. And then I can 
um, we, we can uh, go down here. If we render it, looks pretty cool. But you know, this gray, this gray uh, world that we live in is kind of boring. So I'm gonna change that and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's bring up the eyeball to the top. Oh, it's still, there you go. Material, cool. So there's, an, there's one eyeball. I don't like this gray universe, so we're gonna change it. We are going to go to environment texture. I'm gonna open up HDRI. HDRIs are basically 360 pictures that we can use to simulate that we're in different environments. This is like, this is called abandoned tank farm. So now, you know, as you can see, we are in an abandoned tank farm, believe it or not. I don't know where this is, but it's somewhere outside. So now when I, I'm gonna shade smooth. So now when I uh, render it, it looks like it's gonna be outside. Pretty cool. Going to go back to solid just cause I can. Yeah. Oop, make this one bigger. Make this one a little smaller. This one a little bigger. Make this one a little smaller. So now we have that. I can change this to black. So now it's kind of like that. If I want to get really weird, I can change it to subsurface scattering, which basically emulates how light goes through skin. So it kind of be it'll look like a skin monster. And I'm going to make it gray. Let's bring it down a little bit. So yeah, cool. Uh, this is called, this rendering engine is called EV. It doesn't look as nice, but it's faster. So I'm going to go to cycles, which I normally use, and I can continue to bring the color down. So it looks more black, but I think this looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, so it, I was just saw something in chat. I need to go figure out how that works. There we go. You can wait on those things for the chat, Spencer. Okay. I'll ask you when you're ready. Okay. Yeah, you can just go ahead and unmute and ask me as I as I work on this project because I'm okay. going to be looking at uh, the screen. So. All right. Sounds good. Um, there are a few questions. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Thank you, first of all, for showing us some of the process. It's really, really amazing to see while you're working. Um, Mo was really curious and had to jump off, but I thought I would ask one of Mo's questions. Um, Mo wanted to know what, what the main focus is with your art. He was wondering if it's storytelling or 3D or something else, or is it everything together? Uh, the main focus of my art is, it's just a hybrid of everything. My, my main goal is to become a, I already am a storyteller. Um, but yeah, storytelling is the thing that I do. 3D is how I bring it to life. So I'm working on a TV show. I'm working on a short film. They're all in 3D <clears throat> or hybrids of 3D and live action. And they uh, give me the ability to realize the vision that I have in my head. It's just a tool. Um, <clears throat> 3D, is, 3D is a tool to bring my, my ideas to life. And that's what I use, especially Brender being free. I use it a lot to help me bring things to life. So yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a hybrid of everything. I love just learning new skills and new ways to tell stories, but you know, coding, I'm trying to get in and learn how to, to code and stuff. So that is one way that I'm going to be able to tell stories. Another way will be able to, you know, through animation or writing or whatever. I'm just trying to not live in the, in the binary of like, if you're a filmmaker, you do this. I just want to do it all because it's fun and I'm good at it. So yeah. That's great. Can you tell us what part you're working on right now on the spider? I'm working on putting the 
I'm really fighting it. I'm, I'm working on putting the legs on. And then I'll probably go ahead and do shoes after that. But yeah, this is how you put the legs on. Uh, I'm using a uh, Benzer curve. And they basically is just like noodles or pipe cleaners, essentially, in 3D. And you can make them whatever shape you want. And if you put a material on them, I already have the one for the skin, so I can put that on. It works in tandem with the other material, so it looks like it's one part of the body. And I can just copy and move these different points around so it's different, like different positions. That looks good to me. Then I can copy it and move it down. And I can grab this and bring it over here and move it back up. So it looks like. It has multiple legs. Pretty cool. So this is what it looks like right now. Are there any more, more yeah, questions in chat? I just, yeah, I just got really curious. This is looking amazing. Thank you for taking us through the, the process. Um, I have another question from Nick. Nicholas is curious, what is the next step for these monsters? Do you want them to exist digitally or turn back into a physical object someday? Uh, if I could, if I had the means to make it into a, um, into a 3D object or like a uh, 3D print, like this wizard, you've seen this, this is the mascot of Brenda, Brenda Arts, the little wizard. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is, this was something that I designed that I brought into 3D. I, if I could do 3D prints of the monsters, I would, but I don't think I have the, the means to do so. So I might, I think what the idea is, I think I'm going to put them into like a yearbook. Since it's ghoul school, they have to have a yearbook. So I think that's what is going to happen with them. I'm going to work on that. After this, pro after this presentation, I'm going to rest, but then I'll get back to realizing that vision. I, uh, an a idea that I had was like, um, you know, make a scholarship based off of this program and turn that uh, work into a book. I think that'd be pretty cool. And the kids would, would uh, love it. Kids could get access to the, uh, um, to some of the scholarship maybe. Yeah, maybe that's dreaming too big, but that's something I was, I was thinking about for sure, so. Yeah. I don't think that's dreaming too big at all for what it's worth from my perspective. Um, I, I love that, that there's so much life to the work that can still happen and so much vision that you have for the project in general. Um, I wanted to ask another question from uh, Jordan who noticed or says that she personally really saw some of the games and shows that you brought up, specifically Imaginary Friends. And then she was wondering a little bit more about materials um, it's a question that builds on this notion of, of having them as 3D sculptures. If you were, would you like to have them be like a 3D printer the way that the Brenda Arts sculpture is? Or would you be more interested in like a soft sculpture, like a puppet? Puppets would be cool. I love, <clears throat> I designed stuffed animals as a kid. I still do. Um, I'm actually working on one of the little wizard right now. Here's the, here's the head. I haven't sewn it together yet. But, you know, maybe stuffed animals, maybe 3D objects, maybe, you know, you know, Pokemon cards or something, you know, have it as a physical, tangible thing. But yeah, plastic would be cool. I'm a big fan of Susubi characters or like Susubi figures from Japan. So having a whole gang of those um, with the, you know, the cool colors and the, the, the multicolor aesthetic would be really sick. Um, I, could, I could definitely see it as that. But um, yeah, I think um, stuffed animals or actual, you know, pop, uh, puppets or like hard figures would be cool. Um, I love to, to work with somebody on that to bring that to life for sure. Um, but I just needed to finish all the models. So, but yeah, that's where I'm at with that project. That's great. Thank you. Um, Janet Marie wonders, which of these characters do you think would make the best series together um, if they were to have their own TV show? 
That's a good, that's a very good question. Okay. I haven't really thought I haven't really even thought about that. Um let's probably probably something. I think that story is really good. Um speaks to the alienation uh that I feel in a lot of ways. But yeah, I'm just gonna go let me go back through and look through all the different monsters. Um I, I'm very impartial to the mannequin. I like that one. Um, Shade Bot 11. All of them could have their own characters. Devil Duck could have his own sh- series. Elmo already does, you know. Um, I like the little lamb with the fish. My girlfriend made that one. So I'm, uh, you know, biased towards that. But yeah, I think all, all, honestly, honestly, all of them probably could, you know. I don't eat all of, all of them definitely could. There's enough personality in the design to make characters around them and plots around those characters. So, yeah. That's a great question, Janet Marie. Thank you. Um, Orion wants to know, or says, Spencer, I love everything about this project so much. Are there any monster designs or backstories you've received that surprised you? Do you have a favorite? I think, again, I think something was a really good one. Um, I think Star was a really good one. Tr- Mr. Tripadu was a really good one. There was a lot of detail to that. I don't know how you come up with that in five minutes. Um, Shade, Shade Bot 11, there's a whole universe in that one. I don't even know what it is, but I'm intrigued by it. And I definitely want to, you know, explore that some more. Um, Devil Duck for sure. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of good ones. I don't want to single anyone out. You know, I, I think that I think there's a lot of strong, um, a lot of strong ones in there. So, yeah, I, I I guess that's a cop out answer, but I love them all. I think that's a great answer. I I completely can imagine my my imagination um, has run really wild just imagining these characters in different circumstances and settings. Um, thank you for that answer. Uh, Jordan has a few more questions. Um, and she's wondering, how is working with kids, making their visions come to life, transformed your art as a whole? Definitely, like, <clears throat> working, with, working with kids is, and it means, like I said, it means a lot. Um, but it, it means a lot in the way that, like, they know what's real and what's not. So. I work hard to make something that like, is just like, oh, yo, did you see that? Like he made, he, he saw what I made and then he like, he went crazy with it. And I'm just, you know, I really am working hard to impress my art. My art has gotten exponentially better in the last year um, because I, one, I had a lot of time to do it. And two, um, I know who I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying, not trying to impress, I'm trying to impress myself, but I know that if I don't do my job right, I'm going to let a child down and I can't live with that. So I always have to be like, man, I'm tired. It's 3 a.m., but I got to, I got to, you know, manipulate these polygons so I can do the best, you know, job that I can to make somebody like, oh, you realize my vision. Now, can you, can you teach me how to do that? So yeah, I'm working really hard to just figure out how to be the be the best artist I can be so kids can be the best artist they can be. And it's been working out, you know. I'm pretty stoked on all that. So are, with that in mind, what are some of the ways that um, working with kids has impacted or enriched your life and your art practice? I think, you know, it definitely it uh and working on this show you know i have to think about how to compress all of these really big ideas down into forms that young people uh people who don't know about it can understand it so it's a really good because i can just talk and talk and talk about whatever but it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything if i you know say praxis pedagogy and whatever else you know um 
whatever, whatever else. So I'm working hard to be able to speak concisely and also like not not be I, I don't want to be above anybody I just want to be able to be like I, I'm a student in this as much as you are like if you ask me something I don't know how to do like I'm going to go research it but I'm going to teach you how to do it so you can teach somebody else how to do it um and you know it, they'll just go exponentially out that way so I don't I my art got better because I just have to really work at a lot of things in personal life and in you know artistically so yeah i just want to make something that uh people will get stoked on essentially i don't know if i answered the question um i think it answered it really wonderfully um i think that jordan would also love to know if you think you'll keep this process for a while or if you think you'll head in a different direction in the near future uh you know uh, I'm not really sure. I think, I think the, uh, kid art thing, is always what I wanted to do. So, or, or at least like working with kids, teaching them how to do it. Cause I didn't learn, I didn't get good at what I did without, you know, watching other people do it. So I just, I just see myself doing this for a while, you know, maybe the, the movies are, you know, adult movies, but I'm always going to be documenting the process always, you know, giving out, I don't want to hold the cheat codes. I want to be able to give the cheat codes out. Uh, I want to be able to, you know, open up the door to this whole movie making thing, art making thing. So, because when I was growing up, you know, there weren't, there weren't, there weren't people who looked like me doing what I wanted to do. So now that I'm in the space, for to put my I put myself in the space where I can um people can project onto me is like oh yeah he's doing it he's doing what I want to do so I never want to be out of reach from those people I want to be you know I want them to be able to interact with me and see the process I don't want to uh take away the ability to um you know grow and create with people who look like me and Hopefully I can inspire them to go out and chase their dream. So yeah, it's always, it's always going to be uh, the Brenda stuff is always going to be integrated into everything that I do. I don't know if that answered the question. Again, I like to talk. I like to ramble. So hopefully some, somebody could make sense of that. You're making perfect sense. I think um, we just have time for one more question. And I think this is a nice closing question also from Jordan. Do you ever create work straight from your own imagination or from your own imagination as a child? I think you touched on that a little bit, but would you be willing to share a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, all like the robot was the first thing that I just made. Uh, it was like one of the first characters I was really proud of. And I stuck around. The little wizard is a, another character that I was really proud of. And he has a whole backstory. And the show that I'm making has is like is all from me um i can i can probably show one character that i designed recently hopefully i can figure out how to oh yeah since i'm in blender i can just bring it in but i i do make personal art for myself um there's a lot of things i'm not going to talk about right now just because they're not in stages where i want to talk about them openly until they come out but yeah, there's all, I'm always, you know, trying to do new things, learn more, have more fun, trying to like, I, you know, this project pushed me a lot. It was really hard. And now I can take what I learned from this into my own works. And so far it's been, uh, you know, really helping me out, to be honest. Uh, let's see if I can find this picture. I have so many pictures on my computer. One of my one of my many jobs is here's a character that I made. Uh, same same. I don't know if it's Google Thorpe or whatever, but here's a here's a character that I made in the same vein. I was trying to make my own Susubi character from you know the Japanese figure, and this came out 
and I'm really stoked with how it came out. So I do a lot of stuff just for fun and all that. But yeah, you know, I'm always working on something. I just want to finish this uh, little spider and then we can dip out. Just have to go back to UV editing there. Uh, on smart project, hopefully this works. And then let's see if I can do that. Hopefully I can, there we go. And don't want this, not over. So yeah, there's the spider. I can hide it. I can, let's, Stop that. Let's just grab all this here. I can yeah. Oops, go back to layout. And let's see. There you go. Wow. Spencer, thank you so much for giving there you us go. your demo. Amazing, amazing. I'm so inspired. I know Mo is planning to download the software right away to, to get Blender um, so that he can try playing with some of these ideas. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm glad. Thank you for, uh, I just want to, you know, shout out to you for, you know, welcoming me in and, you know, allowing me to share some of my best work uh, with, with the kids and the world at large. So yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, we appreciate you more than we possibly have words for. Thank you so much. Each of your presentations has just opened up your practice. Um, and I really do hope that uh, the students watching and everybody that's watching feels inspired to kind of take on and learn the things that you want to know so that you can share them out. And you said that imagination is free and that's something that really resonates with me. And I think about it all the time in my own work too. Um, so cheers. Thank you so much for spending time with us this year as an artist in residence, even in this remote format. We can't wait to keep working with you in the future. I hope you'd be open to that as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm, I, you know, it's never yeah. the KS Mocha Brenda connection. It's never going to stop. No, we're going to no. continue. We're going to continue to inspire <laughs> these kids to be who they want to be and not uh, what is societally okay. That's, I think, exactly the goals. Uh, we have some shared goals there. So appreciate you. Um, and to everybody else watching, all the Dr. MLK Junior School students watching on the YouTube live channel, thank you so much for being here. We love having a chance to talk to you every week. Um, other folks, if you want to meet us here, same time next week, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we'll be hearing um, the third lecture from the artist Lucia Moke, and we will get to hear a little bit more about what she's been working with with the students that she's been able to connect with through this program. Uh, we really look forward to it. We love spending time with everybody who spends time with us. And please feel free to watch these after the fact. Uh, they'll be archived on our YouTube live channel. And if you have questions to follow up with on the artist, you can always shoot those to us via our chaosmoka.com website. We'll make sure to find out what we can and get back to you. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a really 